Hello and welcome back for another presentation in your California Geography course, this one on California's urban patterns and architecture. Now, the previous video spent most of the time talking about the urban design, architectural design, the cityscapes, and I did promise one additional video afterwards, which will be looking more at California's fast food and dining and really what has that done to our landscape in California and how does that really separate us from the rest of the world and also created a trend set that we see across our landscapes not just in California, but across the globe. So let's begin. Now, fast food was practically born here, and we know that now, arguably, White Castle Burgers in Kansas was the first fast food restaurant, but we really initiated and developed the very broad spectrum of quick services, quick serve services, as it were called. Uh, beginning in 1940 with McDonald's, 1945 with Carl's Jr., you've got Tommy's in 1946, you had Mr. Fat Burger in 1947, In-N-Out 1948, Jack in the Box 1951, Derwiner Schnitzel in 1961, Taco Bell in 62, and Del Taco in 1964. What's interesting is that the photos I've decided to share, these are actually photos of the first. So this is the first Jack in the Box, the first Del Taco, um, the first Carl's Jr., the first uh, McDonald's famous hamburgers, uh, and then the first Taco Bell. What's interesting is the first Taco Bell building has just been rescued. Uh, just a couple of years ago, it was um, uh, repurchased by the Taco Bell franchise and they rolled it down in LA and moved all the way across to their headquarters. And what I love about the Del Taco, which opened up in 1964, and I, I think that is a 64 Ford short bed pickup truck, probably a three on the tree. It looks like they bought some new equipment. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, I guess this is kind of fun to think that in California, we were the first, that we invented all this. And really, you know, we, we give that attribution and that reasoning to car culture. The fact that we had more cars per capita than any other state between the 1940s and 60s. And even then, even looking at today, you know, most households have more cars than people that live within them. And since you have a car culture, you're going to be on the go. So I kind of thought this would be fun. Most of you may not even remember or know of these things, but think about just the the franchises that we've lost in, in our lifetime. But these are some of my favorite uh, restaurants that do not exist anymore. You've got uh, Pup and Taco, which has a very unique ar architectural design. Um, you know, a lot of Wiener Sinsels kind of took that A-frame with it, but Pup and Taco was a mixture between Del Taco and Wiener Schnitzel. So you have hot dogs and you have hamburgers. You have Skipper Allen Hale from uh, Gilligan's Island. He had his own lobster barrel restaurant in Los Angeles. On La Cienega, we have the Der Wiener Schnitzel, which is now just turned into Wiener Schnitzels. Uh, you have the Mini Pearl Chicken, uh, Bahuka, which is out in San Gabriel. Lowry's, the Seasoning Salt, had their own steakhouses. Sambo's, great food and restaurants. You had uh, Love's Barbecue, because when you're in love, the whole world's delicious. Uh, you had the the Helms Bakery, which uh, is now a, I think a, a, like a food court, the original one, and down down like outside of Santa Monica area. The building's been uh, preserved, but the Helms Bakery man had a very unique vehicle that would drive around your neighborhood and uh, deliver fresh uh, pastries and breads. And then one of the more recent losses uh, was the Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor, which was a huge piece of our landscape in California, and uh, I think. I've seen just one sign left and the, the they're all gone. We had one in Santa Clarita for a long time and it just recently closed. So speaking of just kind of these do you remembers, I thought I'd pick just a couple to talk about that I thought were interesting. The first one would be Danny's Donuts, uh, which you probably never heard of Danny's Donuts, but first opening in Lakewood, California, 1953, Danny's was an immediate success. By 1956, they became 24-hour diners. In 1959, they would end up changing their name to avoid conflict with a donut place called Coffee Dan's by just changing a letter from an A to an E, now known as Denny's Coffee Shop. Today, uh, we know it as Denny's, and there's over 1,700 restaurants globally, but the iconic architecture is observed across the California landscape. And that architecture is this design here. We've see, we see this very prominent in the vintage and original Denny's. Um, a great example, the one on Lyons Avenue out here in Santa Clarita has this design, the one on, on Soledad. Uh, the one in Silmar uh, has one interesting fact about the one in Silmar. Um, if you're into the kind of that like that um, urban legend type uh, kitschy Americana stuff, but the uh, Manson group 
actually Charles Manson ran into Denny's, the one there in Selmar, um, after leaving the, the iconic Manson situation, uh, to go get some milkshakes uh, while they were fueling at the gas station next door. Uh, moving into Love's Barbecue, which is one of my favorite, um, you know, founded in the San Fernando Valley, 1945. Very distinct red roof, big heart that said Love's. Um, they'd become one of the most popular California barbecue spots ever. Uh, locations in Northridge, Valley Plaza, Pico, Hollywood Boulevard, even Beverly Hills. Uh, Love's Barbecue uh, ended up going defunct about, mm, about in the late 90s. Uh, the, the family still owns the company name. They're based out of Diamond Bar, which was interesting because I was able to contact them. And they still sell their famous barbecue sauce, um, which is absolutely delicious. But, you know, again, I mentioned earlier in the other presentation about just that Buzz and Woody era and that idea of barbecue was huge. You know, all these, you know, we had these, literally, we had cattle ranches still in California in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. And so we had a lot of fresh meat that was available. And so this idea of that Western barbecue became very, very prominent. We still have ranchers, but we rarely eat and purchase California meat because our meat is... Uh, that is produced in California is incredibly lean uh, and very rich in nutrients. It's, the, it's super high grade and usually other people outbid us and it's shipped internationally. Uh, another place that I thought was interesting to share would be Vandekamp's. Uh, Vandekamp's opening as a Dutch bakery in Los Angeles in 1915 on Spring Street in downtown LA. By the 1950s, there was about 320 Vandekamp Holland Dutch bakers along the West Coast. Uh, what made them unique, obviously, was that it was Dutch bakery and, and they had, you know, coffee and coffee cakes and stuff like that, was that they all had the distinct windmill that was perched at the top. Yeah, that being said, only one windmill exists in today's landscapes. It's actually at the Denny's in Arcadia across from um, the Santa Anita Mall by the Arboretum. So things to just kind of, I wanted to bring into this California culture type attribute is that when we talk about I'm going to actually click back to the first um, this list, very short list, but there's obviously a lot more. I just kind of picked the things that were more prominent. Um, is that when when going throughout our landscape when driving around as a urban geographer we start to you know recognize these landscape pieces so as an example taco bell taco bell was actually the guy's last name uh, that created it but they all had this very unique you know mission style they all had the archway at the top where the bell would be found uh, you know driving around anywhere you will start to recognize these buildings because what was done is that when you created your restaurant and you did your architectural design, it was just easier to, to just replicate the same design for all your restaurants. Instead of having to go and having a new architect redesign something, just you have it, you make it, you build it, it's done. Just like we did with the housing developments, you know, you design a Cinderella home and that's what it is. Um, but it's just fun to be able to drive by places and be like, oh, that was a Taco Bell. That was definitely a Denny's. Like as an example, if you live out in Santa Clarita when you're driving down Lyons Avenue, uh, there's a place called Bricks. It's a like a Vietnamese fusion restaurant, and it's literally a brick. It's the Taco Bell. It was the original Taco Bell uh, before the one on the top of Hamburger Hill was built. Uh, Jack in the Box also had its very distinct design. They had a Jack in the Box that you would actually order with. You would talk to them and in order through the jack, which was kind of creepy. Um, <clears throat> McDonald's, you know, this is the first one before it was McDonald's, McDonald's that we know it as today because the family sold it, but uh, which then it became more prominent in the landscape in 55. But the McDonald brothers in 1940 opened up their first restaurant. Um, and then they, and then starting in 55 and going forward, it was the Golden Arches. They had their distinct landscape. You also had um, In N Out that had the, have the, palm trees that are crossed and then uh, Del Taco's had a very unique design with a special sun uh, design that was put on the outside and so on and so forth so as you begin to you know kind of reflect on our landscape you start to recognize these places I'm like oh yeah yeah you know, that's Wiener Schnitzel because that A-frame with the red and the yellow where you you look at a Carl's Jr. or a Tommy's Burger and you start to recognize these pieces you know like Tommy's Burgers the original ones didn't even have indoor seating they only had like two benches on the outside and you know it was really you didn't sit and enjoy your food you went picked it up and and, and hit the road which is kind of cool well anyway i hope this was kind of fun for you again we're kind of a short video but i just want to introduce you know fast food was created here and things that i mentioned before you know it, we live in a different environment today you know your grandparents and 
even further back, you know, they remember the picnic benches along the side of the freeway. They remember being able to stop at an Orange Julius or an A&W root beer and, you know, traveling and taking all day to go somewhere versus, you know, now we've got an agenda and we move along the way, you know, and these kitschy architectural designs, you know, again, I reflected on these in the last video. So unique, these designs in our landscape and very kitschy, very fun, and really it was part of that that reflection of car culture and just seeing you know to be able to go in and visit these experiences well, anyway, I hope this was fun for you be sure to check out some of the videos don't forget to like the video if you liked it and uh, we'll talk